Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to the quaint little village of Swords in Farthest Frontier. Now, in the last episode, we had just doubled our population yet again. We're getting pretty close now to 100 total inhabitants, and this means we've actually got about 30 people not currently assigned to a job. Freeloading off the, the hard work of the people in the industry and down the mines. So today, we're going to be mass harvesting resources all around us, building that wall, <laughs> getting some new industry and farms, and really putting these people to work. So... Let's get into it. Now, one little correction from a previous episode that I was saying we currently have houses ready to be upgraded and I'd been saying I'm going to hold off on doing that because we don't actually really get any more money from them. They just get more happy and happiness for us right now is really, really high. So I was saying like, ah, we don't really need to upgrade them. Turns out you do get more tax from them. It just doesn't tell you in the game directly. So here, when we look at a shelter and we look at the upgrade bonuses, we can see a larger happiness bonus and increased durability. It doesn't say anything about getting more money. But when you do upgrade them, you get homesteads. And in the game guide that takes you out to the website and has brief descriptions, in the desirability category, it tells you that homesteads will provide you more tax. And when you look at your monthly gold report, you actually do see a separate category for taxes homestead with a little bit of extra income there. So. It is worthwhile, and that's what we're going to be doing today also, allowing these to actually upgrade. I'm going to wait just a little bit. Whoa. Um, so, picking up right where we left off at the end of the last episode, we were just building out, of, out here, uh, harvesting resources, loading up the cart with more wood and things like that. And then we had just built an extra forager hut and a hunting cabin here because we saw that there was some boar lurking around nearby. And actually hovering over it, we do see where it is. It's right there. They're territorial animals that pose a danger to villagers that wander too close, but provide meat. So we're going to be trying to feed all of these people as well, because we have just taken on so many more people with 30 people not working jobs. That sustainability is going to get harder and harder to maintain. Ultimately, you you know, you need a portion of your people always working food to sustain the growing population. So, all right. So basically what I was thinking is we're going to just cut down and harvest a bunch of trees out this way while we're still building that wall the final bit of the wall out here, and then we're going to continue building the wall out here. So let's just let time play. I'll speed it up as well. And we'll move the cart further out this way too. Now something else I'd be meaning to do, actually I'll just keep time on normal, is stock the market with some extra things. So I've since learned that you can... What you tell them to stock is actually the rate at which they're always going to try and stock. You're not saying store 10 directly in here. You're saying always keep 10 in here. I think that's kind of how it works. We'll see anyway as time goes on. But I'm going to say... Keep this at 50 coats. So we have currently 18 hide coats. So it's a pretty high number, but we're going to try and really ramp up our industry so we can sell things and make good money. And then for shoes, we've actually al already nearly got 50. But I'll say put 50 in there as well. And they'll start transferring things in. And when the market trader comes by, then of course we'll try and sell stuff if we get lucky with a good trader. We also bought our heavy tool previously. So something I'm going to want to do also is get working. Oh, there's a trader actually on the way right now. Um, is get working on a farm out this way, building wheat, and then we can get a mill going. So that's what the heavy tool was required for. And it turns out that that heavy tool actually wears out over time. So you need to have a, either be making your own or have a steady amount of gold so you can buy another one. Otherwise, you could be in a lot of trouble if you're relying on bread and wheat and then suddenly you can't get your mill to work anymore. All right, we have all our little worker ants out here chopping away. This is what I was saying. We've just got so many people not doing anything. I was really surprised at the end of the last episode. I guess we've just been taking on so many. But I just hadn't noticed that they didn't have any jobs to do. So as long as we're harvesting something, that's giving them something to do. And they'll be loading up the cart. And we'll bring that cart over to the left side of the town and get continuing the wall. Just going to up the priority of this wall so that they actually get cracking on it. Um, something else, just to get ahead of food production. We only have one fishing shack, but we've got three hunters and three gatherers now. So I'm just going to get another fishing shack sh somewhere down here. Cool. And then maybe they can work this area. And what else? Let me just check the... So we've got Velina in the forager shack. She's currently getting the medicinal herbs. Kind of want to get more willow and build more of the industry for baskets so we can sell it. So there's another basket shop right here. We'll just get another one going right now. Let's see. Basket shop there. So just put it right next to it. Should we put it this way? I reckon there. And then we can have another um, cobbler next to that one. It is, they do fit together, but so does this one. So yeah, that'd be okay. Um, because we're going to get we've an extra hunter, that means more pelts, and so on and so forth. So let's check out the market. 
So who have we got? We have Beldar the Peddler leaving in 50 days. What is he buying? He is buying... Hey, he's buying shoes. Perfect. Um, yep, so... Actually, we, so we've got an order from Cariolis, our gross... Yeah, our, no, not our grocer. Sorry, our trader. He's going to be stocking the trading post. Where is he right now, actually? It says he's doing it. So he's heading out to the tannery, grabbing a bunch of stuff. He's currently carrying one coat. Great. Uh, maybe we'll assign another person here, eh? Make this go a bit quicker in future. Don't want that person leaving in 44 days without getting the shoes loaded up. Um, but yeah, the shoes should sell for a pretty penny. I mean, it's an average price, but at least 45 times 13, whatever that is, decent amount of wallet. Um, should give us a good amount of money for future purchases. We want to be purchasing livestock eventually, and they're about five to 700 for each cow. And the more you can get one go, the better. All right, let's just speed it up just a little bit. I'll try not to forget about that um, trader. So we want to add a couple of extra houses as well. Um, because if you look at our market and our radius, we're currently losing six gold a month. That's because we have the doctor's office turned on right now. And that's going to be costing 30 upkeep. So it's pretty expensive. The monthly, the market's only making 28. And then I guess there's maybe a couple extra services that are costing a little bit extra somewhere. Not sure what that is. But anyway, before I get distracted with that, we'll just put down a few more houses in the market range. And I'm putting these down pretty chaotic because, well, one, I think it kind of looks more natural this way, but also I'm going to build a more ordered, structured town when we expand. I was thinking of just doing it over here because remember we had um, sand all the way out here that I want to work, work towards eventually. This is so far that I'm thinking the wall could come down and then join the lake somewhere over this way. So if you want that to happen, then this would be a great area to just clear out a big forest, build a town from scratch, and essentially either move everyone over or just have another town on the go that gives us time to then refactor this one. So we have like two little sort of villages coinciding with each other. Um, and that way the farms will be in between, which is decent. And um, maybe we could also move the compost. People said that before, move the compost maybe closer to the farms. And that way they can stock the farms faster, but it's, that's actually really not that important because they stock it super quick anyway. Um, and they only do it like once a year. Uh, so it's super fast. You don't really have to worry about that. But it would be good to be able to collect waste from two towns in the middle. That would make sense for sure. All right. So you need to move your radius so you can get some fish. So 696 fish. Now I was streaming this game. And uh, I actually had a little lake. A little lake. And I had three fisheries in there. And we actually drained the lake of fish. Um, they do come back though eventually, which is good. But... It was kind of interesting to see. It actually does run out, or can run out, so you do need to space these apart. We had a very small lake. It was almost like a pond in a way. All right, looks like the wall is done. Um, I had a comment about the gates facing the wrong way. I think this is facing the right way. Gates should push in, not out, to a town, especially defensively. If, if it worked the other way around, then someone on the outside could wrap things around this and pull it out towards them, because the hinges would lean, lean out that way, whereas... Yeah, that, it, should, it should come in, right? I think so, anyway. So I'm going to keep it this way. I think I did build one or two of them the wrong way, though. Um, one of them's facing out. Yeah, this one. So I don't know. Leave a comment which way you think it should be, but I think it should be coming in. Like, the, the gates open in. You open them in as people come in. That's to me, makes sense. Um, okay, so we're pretty much done with the wall here. That's the only reason I was harvesting out this direction. So we'll start telling them to... You can stop harvesting there. Start harvesting basically everywhere around this farm bring up the cart as well and then everything down here too so the cart's going to make its way up that way i have to go over to the oh i just missed him oh well it doesn't really matter because ultimately we just need the money for and he wasn't selling it at a great price we'll just try to make a note that we did load up the thing but i was just a little late oh my god i always miss the traders anyways I wish there was an icon that told you or, or a notification that said, hey, we're about to leave. It'd be just helpful for me. But anyways, the good news is it was only average price. Someone will come in looking for either a, good, a better price and we'll just keep 50 stocked of both jackets and, and shoes. And really what I want to buy is the cow. So unless he had a cow with him at, the exact, at this time right now, it's not really anything, anything lost. We're fine for gold. We have 860 there and we have 544 in the trading post right now. So I'm, I'm okay with it. Not ideal. Was a mistake, but it's not that bad. All right, we've got some extra houses being placed down and being built. That was really quick, actually. They built them super fast. Um, and we can also now allow the upgrades. So some of these houses are going to become homesteads. And when that happens, we should start seeing the gold go up. 
All right, villager cured, food stocks are low. Yeah, food stocks are low. That's why we have the second fishery out there. There they are. Silana. Carrying six fish, and she's going to be eating two herself. It's a little greedy. All right. Otherwise, they're looking good. There's tons of willow out here, so we've just put down another basket makers. And the idea was that maybe if I had another gathering hut out here, one of them dedicated to the willow, one of them dedicated to the medicinal herbs, um... That should be good for kind of the resource production, basically. So in the food category, uh, another, not a hunter cabin, sorry, a foraging hut. Foraging shack. Pop it right there where we've just cleared some trees anyway. And then we'll give them the range out here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's crazy. There's so much willow out here. I don't really know why. And then we could actually say maybe move these berry bushes close by too. Uh, seeing as you're going to be getting medicinal herbs and stuff. Just move them over this way somewhere. Kind of misplaced that first one. There's actually medicinal and herbs all here. Oh, really? We could just have the one out here. But anyway, two people, the more the merrier. The quicker we'll get it all done. Yeah, so um, we could just shift it now. There we go. Forager shack all the way out there. Look at the amount of stuff. It's crazy. All right, great. Let's run times two speed right now. Now, we could check the rate of different things as well to see how we're doing. But I think everything's fine. By the way, um, something I've also learned that I think might be relevant for people is when you salvage buildings, you get 50% back. If you move the building, you keep all the materials. So if you're going to reorganize a certain place, don't delete things. Just move them. And I also learned that if a house gets abandoned, let's say this house needs 30% reliability, uh, desirability in order to upgrade and become a homestead. It also needs 30% to maintain it. So if desirability here falls below 30, this house will become abandoned. They'd rather live, they'd rather not have a home than have a home that isn't that nice, apparently. So because of that, if a house gets abandoned, I was wondering, oh, how do we ever get it back? Because you can tear it down and get some materials back, but you can't, there's no option to rebuild. But it turns out if you get the desirability in the area back up to 30, then it will be eventually refilled. Not immediately, but eventually people will move back in and restore the home. So I just thought that was kind of worth mentioning. It's just stuff I learned. All right, looking good. Let's continue. Um, so we're basically harvesting this entire area. The extra farms are going to go here. Uh, right next to this area. Another one down here because the fertility is still pretty good around this area. We're harvesting clay. We need to get more stone. We're quite low on that. So that's another building we can put down. So there's a temporary shelter here being stocked with food. I'm going to go to the resource production, get a work camp, and just put it somewhere like just here. And we can set its radius to over by the stone. It's a little bit of a distance, I guess. Maybe we could just tuck it in that way. I just wanted to make sure that they go and use the temporary shelter. So I just don't want them to be too far from it. All right, cool. So temporary. So yeah, they should get their food in here or go to the shelter when they need to. I also noticed that the temporary shelter sometimes does get occupied. Typically during winter, when people like are rushing for a shelter, they might rush into this building and you see the occupancy go up. So that's kind of interesting. I don't think it's a permanent thing, though. I think it is, again, obviously it's called a temporary shelter, but I think even that occupancy is just a temporary thing. I'm guessing it still says they are, they're occupants of other places. Let's have a look at our homesteads. Looking awesome. A little bit better than they were before. They have a kind of a thicker thatched roof. A little bit bigger house overall. A little background shack. I guess like almost like an outhouse or something. I don't know. Um, and let's have a look. So basically the upgrade requirement for this will be to get to tier 3. Um, they need 3 food types, pottery and candles. So... And that's the upgrade cross. So the next one will be additional housing capacity. So the next level up from a homestead actually allows more people to live here. So that's really, really, really good. And I'm guessing more taxes too. But yep, for now, we're just going to be sticking with obviously aiming to keep everything around 30 to 40%. Get everyone bringing them up to having uh, a homestead. And we can see we're actually making gold now. Homesteads are bringing in four gold in total. So what we want to do to raise desirability is just put some extra gardens and things around at the back of these. Kind of spam that long garden, actually, because it just fits really nicely in with different things. And then maybe out here as well. And then we could put maybe a medium garden here. Get rid of that willow. Sorry to say, but it has to go. There we go. All right, cool. So that should raise desirability, and these houses will just poof into homesteads. They only require six planks for the upgrades. It's not too bad. No more trader here at the moment. These carts that are coming back and forth are obviously the wagons transporting back and forth. We could get another wagon, thinking about it. 
So let's increase that, and we could get more baskets on the go too. So how many people do we have not doing anything? We've got 18. So I say not doing anything. They are obviously harvesting, cutting down trees, things like that, but they're not working a job properly, a profession, a specific profession. Food is okay, though. We have seven months in the bank, so looking all right. It does keep saying seven months is going to spoil, but as long as we eat it before it spoils, it's fine. All right, and our other foraging shack is done now, so we'll just add this out here. Same area. There's so much to gather, and all this willow is just going to be fed into the basket shops up here. I suppose you could have them maybe down here or something, knowing that it's coming in that way, but I suppose, actually, we do have willow over here, too. All right, things are looking good, so should we commence the next phase of the wall? I think so. This wall has taken a very, very long time. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just trying to gauge where is it going to come all the way down. It has to come to about there, I reckon. So we could say to about here. It's a big chunk of the wall. And then we'll just move the cart down there. So they just pull from the cart to, to get it built. And then I'll just increase. It's already at three. Maybe we'll just set some priority so they get cracking on it. And then let's start harvesting just even more around here. And we could just stop harvesting here for a little bit. Actually, they're doing it, so I might as well leave them. They're just going to have to travel a little bit further. Alright, things are looking good. Still waiting on another trader to come by, but how's our stock, our inventory? We have 25 coats stocked. We have 50 shoes stocked. Uh, none of them in the global inventory, but as we make more now, we'll just keep them for ourselves. Uh, what else? We could stock other things like clay and... Wood, even if we wanted to. Wood can sometimes sell. Wood is totally renewable, so it's not bad selling that. Stone isn't renewable. It actually says in the early access, not roadmap, but they have a, a kind of um, what how they plan on the final version differing. They say that they're hoping that they can make stone a renewable source by having like a, a late game stone mine or something like that, you know? Or a quarry, I guess you'd call it. Uh, so what we're going to do with this, have we built a work camp before, actually? I guess not, so this is our first work camp. A work camp is cool, it's a generalized building. Work camps are used to continuously harvest wood and stone. Laborers assigned to the, the camp will deposit materials at the work camp where a wagon can collect it. So that wagon that's going back and forth here, it should stop by here as well. So we'll just put four people out on this. We'll say just stone, move this all the way, the resource ratio. So you can say for every five stone, pick up one wood. I want just stone here. And then there's all of the stone, it's hard to see, but a clump there, here, and here. So just right in the middle there should be a good amount to get. And it'll tell you eventually when it runs out and they can't get any more. And then they should just grab the food from the temporary shelter. So once this area is, is depleted, then we could just get rid of the building or move it somewhere else, you know. And we could get a steady supply of wood coming in then. I suppose we could have like a work camp down here instead of just harvesting. I wonder, would that be better? and just tell them to clear this area, clear these trees. I mean, you can only have four people doing it, though. So, don't know, it might be better, but it's fine. <laughs> just tell them to harvest, just the old-fashioned way. And then we'll build that wall, and then we'll just clear everything inside. All right, looking good. Uh, we've added some more houses, no more people have arrived yet. And then they are becoming homesteads. Happiness, pretty good. Some people are less happy than others, though. And we're going to have to start thinking about getting flax to make our own clothes also, because we're going to get start getting low on that. This area is pretty much clear now, so we can also say, all right, time to get a second farm going. So these farms, eventually, I'm probably going to move them once we've cleared out the clay mines around us. So this isn't like a super optimal farm build or anything. How big is that? Nine by eight. Yeah, that's fine by me. New villager immigrated, new villager born, all good. Food's just a little bit low. I think we'll be okay. The wall's been extended pretty nicely, almost all the way down to where we told it to, just to there. And what year? We're coming up to year nine. And how's our farm doing, actually? So we just harvested cabbage. We planted 1,054 and got 865. Not bad. Remember, our soil isn't the best, so we're trying to get to that sand mine so we can bring in a little bit more in the future uh, and make these farms a little bit better. And then what we're going to be doing is start making... Wheat, we have the heavy tool for the mill, get cracking on flour, and then mix that and make bread and, and a bakery. And a bakery actually adds desirability to all these homes, so it could really um, make them super happy. But I think I'll use the bakery over in the, in the planned expansion, the second city, almost. Alright, everyone's back out. Extremely cold temperatures with a moderate breeze, but they have their heavy coats. 
So this hasn't caught anything for a while. That's a bit of an it's a bit alarming. There is a boar right there. Oh no, that's that's our hunter. Yeah, this says there's five boar, but we don't see it, and there's boar over this way too. Alright, well let's just move this around. It says there's deer out here also, so just move it a bit further down, maybe they'll get both. Oh my god, you I think you found them. Oh, he ran away. But so did they. Well, we know where they are. Maybe we'll just tell them to go a bit further out this way then. Okay. And there's still deer out here that we're gather or gathering, you know. Hunting. And that wall's almost ready to come all the way across. So yeah, let's start bringing this down this way then. And then we'll just join the wall all the way out here. So I kind of wanted it to be level with this road. Because that's a nice crossing point for us. So right there. And this can just go straight all the way across. But we don't want to build the whole thing at once. So I know it has to come to here. So that's good. So let's just remember that. And let's just do th this far first. Any traders? No trader at the moment. Stock is 28 for coats, 50 for shoes. Nothing else we really have in excess that I'm willing to sell. I mean, maybe something like herbs, but I feel like you always use them. And then willow and things like that, we're turning into baskets. Baskets might be a good thing to load up, actually. Do we have any baskets? Wow, I don't know why I'm not seeing it. We should have some baskets, right? Oh, there they are. Sorry, right there. I just didn't expect two of them. I was looking for, like, one. I don't know. I just missed it. Anyway, 44 there. Yeah, so let's just load up again. 50. And uh, throw all the baskets in there. Loads of shoes, loads of coats. And the next trader that comes by, we're going to make a killing. Now, they do have a finite amount of money. You can't sell that much in one go. But we'll see. Year 9. One month of food is stored. That's a little alarming. Not going to lie. So we're cleaning out weeds yet again. And then we're going with beans. So what's the situation with beans? They yield moderate amounts of dried beans that can be stored longer than other crops. That's good. Actually, I didn't think about that. Impacts fertility. It can actually help fertility, which is interesting. It does help fertility. Wow, yeah, pretty good. Uh, and heat tolerance is really good. So yeah, having it in the middle of summer, I guess, is a good place to put it. But yeah, the target soil mixture could be better. So it would be a slight debuff to it. Yearly taxes collected. We are making money now. The house, The homesteads are outweighing the doctor's office nicely. Every watchtower that we get, we need some defenses. Every watchtower we get is eight upkeep. Eight monthly upkeep. Whereas the barracks is 10, just on its own. But then it's also 10 per soldier that you put inside of it. It's 250 gold to even build it. I feel like the barracks is really good. This is okay, but it kind of only covers like a small area. So I'd really just want to cover right around here. So when they're trying to come in and rob our storehouses or stockyards or stuff it would be good there but it wouldn't do much anywhere else until we get a few of them dotted around the perimeter maybe but that's gonna t i don't have the goal to to be able to afford that i don't mind going a little into the red um but not not to the point where i'd have to have like six towers you know that'd be too much hey we've got a market trader coming in right now These people are making baskets. Love to see it. It'll tell you if they can't, you know, if they're idle, they can't work because there's not enough willow, for instance. All right, let's see what we've got. So this person is willing to buy baskets at a standard rate of 12. Um, they're willing to buy wood at a, a far above average price. It's tempting to sell, actually. It's just free, kind of free money, really, because th these do grow back. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe we could try and stock 100... How long are you here for? 57 days? See, we won't be able to move the wood over quick enough. I reckon we'll just sell the, um, we'll stock wood maybe in future, but I think for now we'll just sell what we have, the 50 baskets. So Cariolis is still stocking. There we go. We just got 50 delivered, did we? Yep. All right. So yeah, let's sell 50 baskets at 12 a pop. Average price, but it is 600. I'm, I'm happy enough with it. It's just excess. It's all good. Let's go. That's sold. Not selling anything else. We could sell clay, but it's a low price that he's buying it for. Again, tempting with the wood. Could maybe just list transferring. I wonder how much wood is right nearby. Let's just see here. 
Zero. So we've 227 global supply, but I reckon it's all in this. Yeah, it is. So because of that, it's like, well, I can't, you're not, you know, it's not gonna, by the time he runs out and runs back, he'll be gone. So there's just no point doing that. We can stock some for the future. We could also buy soap and he's got, oh my god, there we go. He's got cows. Yeah, we could do that. We have enough now to buy that. Let's transfer some gold. We can get our first two cows and build a barn. So we'll take some gold into the trading post. That's nearly 2,000. So we could buy three, maybe? Yeah, and he's selling it for a good price, actually. Just a regular price. Often it's an inflated price. So just give me all this gold, please. No, one, nine, two, three. Let's see. Is that just three? It's just three cows, isn't it? One, two, three. Yeah. Now, as far as I know, if you leave them in the market, they're fine. But once they move out to the barn, they need, like, water and food and area to graze. So we'll just buy and stock them for now. And then when we build that, then we can move them in. All right, we're getting our first livestock. Feels good, man. And we can milk them. Get some additional food and food variety. So there we go, three cows. I would have liked to get four, but we just don't quite have enough gold. And they'll be fine in there for a little while. I wish you could get like I wish you could get like an IOU, you know? It's like, oh, we've got loads of stuff in our inventory. We'll sell it to the next guy. We'll definitely be able to pay you. I, I swear. And our other farm has been done. So I'm just trying to think where we're going to build this barn. So the barn is what we need for the cows, right? With a barn, cattle can be raised for food, hides, and milk. Cattle must be purchased from a visiting trader, which we've just done. Uh, and then you sort of designate an area around it. So... The fertility, excuse me, is based on, like, their grazing. Um, now, does that hurt? Desirability is quite low with this. Yeah. So I'm not really too sure where to put it. I suppose over by the other farms, I guess, makes sense. But again, it's probably going to move. I wanted this area for another farm, so maybe just here. But I sort of planned on this being all a new area for a town. So I'm just a little not sure. I suppose I'll just have to bite the bullet on it for a while. We can always move it later. But somewhere out here, I think, is fine. I need more gates, actually, thinking about it. And this hasn't been built either. So let me just queue that up as well. So, I don't know, just another gate somewhere here. Another gate somewhere there. Probably move this one. Okay, cool, because there's going to be a road that comes down this way then. have to get rid of some of these curved roads soon. People, someone said something about like my road management stuff. All of this is kind of temporary, you know? It's fine. We're doing great, I think. We're making money. We've got good population. No one's starving. Everyone's, ha well, not that happy anymore, actually. But people are generally pretty happy. They're getting a little low on food. We'll be fine. I know it's a little bit of wasted, you know, work time removing roads. We don't lose any resource from it. Unless you're removing cobbled roads, then you do lose some stone, which is annoying. And I probably will actually remove the one that's curved <laughs> eventually. But I'm not putting any more stone roads down because I, I want to wait until we actually get a, a bit more of a structured area to build on. Uh, right, so that wall is all now done. So we have to just continue that wall out. But yeah, if anyone's watched my Anno playthrough or other city builders I play, like I just, I'm not a full, full optimal gamer. I, just, I like to get immersed in my worlds in my game. So I don't know. I just, you know. Try to make things look kind of nice and pleasant, and I'm just not not always 100% on the ball. But at the same time, I usually do just fine. Like I, on Anno, I remember people would like pick you up on like little small things all the time. Generally, everyone who watched that seemed to quite enjoy the series, and it did really well and everything. So that's that's fine. I'm not complaining. Um, but you know, people would be like, "Oh, you could do that. You could do this. You could do this." It's like I did beat the hardest AI. I do have the max amount of money. You know, I don't know what else you really want from me. And of every item in the game, it's like, yes, you could be more optimal. But to what point? You know, I don't f personally find fun being optimal. I know some people. I guess it's all also like an OCD thing. Like, I'm not consciously making mistakes really, on purpose. Except for when I build towns like this. I'm like, yeah, I want it to look broken up and look interesting. It's just more interesting to me to play it that way. Um, but this is not an optimal layout by any stretch. <laughs> um, but it's not trying to be, so. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, some people say, like, why would you do that? It's like, I often just respond sometimes, like, fun. I just, just want to have fun with it. I have fun doing it different ways. Ah, uh, this guy's buying baskets of way more money. Oh, uh, well. Um, but he's also buying shoes. So we could just sell the shoes at the regular price. Should we do that? Do we need the extra money right now? What else is he, could we buy from him? Mm, not much. Could buy some clothes, seeing as we're getting a bit low. Let's put an order in to sell 10 baskets. It's still 160 gold. I'm not going to turn my nose up at that. So yeah, we'll try stock another 50, I guess. We'll wait a few days, see what we get stored, and then um, I'll sell what we can for 16. I'll try not to miss him. 44 days. So that's basically somewhere in the middle of this month, then we'll get back to him. Um, but yeah, I'm actually streaming the game at the same time. As this is out, like I've been streaming it almost every day since the release, and I'm playing it on the hardest difficulty there. So you do have to be a little bit more optimal, so that one has been a bit better that way. Um, if you're looking for a more optimal series. The reason I didn't start this on hard is just because I didn't know how difficult it would be. Um, on hard, the raids are a lot larger. People were saying like that raid wasn't that big. Well, that is the first one. It does get bigger and bigger as time goes on, and it's really whether or not you can keep up with it. Um, the first one, ultimately, your town center, I think, will always just defeat it. Unless you built your town center far away from your storehouses, like, then you'll get robbed, I guess, and maybe nothing would have defended, but we're totally fine on that front. Um, but yeah, in future, we're going to get raids hitting, like, multiple sides of the town at the same time. People will start robbing random buildings and storehouses. They'll kill villagers, that kind of thing, so... It does definitely get harder, um, but that is just the first raid. Alright, cool. 154. That next part of the wall is going nice. So we'll just move down now to get this final bit down here. And we'll just tell people to harvest as well. Oh, the little bits out this way. So these um, hunters and foragers... Like, the hunters definitely will probably end up moving out. Because we're going to be walling in this deer. And I think eventually they're going to go away. When there's too many humans around. The next farm is coming along nicely. They're just flattening out the land. Removing the... Well, kind of removing the weeds and stuff. Before they actually get it ready to be... Planted. And people were saying, oh, you could put um, a fence around this. That's true. But you actually, once you have a wall around the city, my experience is you don't get stuff stolen from you by animals. Now, maybe if the the town is large enough, maybe that still happens. But in my experience, like I said, it's really not a problem. So we need to deliver 40 planks out here. We are working on um, cutting wood all the way down here. We have to be harvesting far more, I think. is a bit of a, a long travel time to get certain things built out that way. The stockyard is like over here where construction materials are stored and our whole town has been built over on the left side now. <laughs> so that's certainly not optimal. But our town looks nice. I like the look of it. Look at this. How cozy is this place? People going to school. They're graduating. We're getting the notifications about people graduating all the time. We're up to 87. I'm surprised more people haven't kind of arrived though in a while. It could be because happiness has fallen. Because food supply has been a bit low. Stocking the... It, when it says the happiness is low from food, we haven't... Huh, that's funny. Nine people just arrived. Yeah, we'll take them in. Oh, there they are, actually. They just got given uh, our clothes, I guess. Their clothes just changed. There they go. They're going straight out to cut down some trees. I love to see it. Um, what was it? Oh, yeah. So I was saying like about stocking food. Is that what I was saying? Yeah, I think so anyway. Well, basically, we've got three months of food. That's in stores. How much food is in their houses depends on the grocer delivering them, right? So that'll keep them happy as long as the houses actually get full of food and all their little amenities that they, they want. But this place should keep us going for quite a while. That's pretty much everything that this market can sustain. Maybe one or two more houses here in the corners. And then, like I said, we'll have about 130 people and we can start building out here, having a fresh town for them to kind of move across to with higher desirability and stuff like that. And a bit more structure and order. And I feel like that's a kind of a nice natural progression from like our little village hamlet to a proper town that's been built with it, all of that kind of stuff now in mind. With stone roads and, and all of that. Like a baker and the school at the heart of it. Because the school has a huge area of influence around it. And then we'll redesign this one. We can move stuff out and change the buildings around too. I like that. You could say, like, why not just build it like that from the beginning? But I don't know. There's something really nice about having it slowly update and progress and change around over time. It's it's more realistic, I guess. That's kind of how it works in real life. Or it did. Uh, 
Okay, anyways. So yeah, maybe more planks is the answer, because uh, we're getting pretty low. Or we're at a bit of a bottleneck for planks for building things. We've got 24 laborers still, and 8 people assigned to possibly be building. We also need a gate down here. Let's just do that. Good. So there we go. Is that the wall complete? I think it. I think so. We're complete. We've got various gates. That gate's facing the wrong way. These are all facing the wrong way. What happened? I definitely have been turning them the right way. Don't know. Anyway, I can fix them later. Uh, okay, so villagers stricken with typhoid. We're seeing this message a lot, but as long as we have the doctor up and running, as long as we have herbs, pretty much it's it's out of our hands, you know. You can help with providing soap and a rat catcher. Actually, you might get a rat catcher now. You can always help with different um, diseases that are kind of going around. Um, but really, a rat catcher is great when you've got a granary, because storing wheat and stuff, the rats will be gnawing away at it. So these people are unable to work. There's no more stone for them to grab out here. And we actually have iron deposits and stuff up here. So they might relocate to a new mining camp or work camp up that way. Is there anything else out for him? No, nah, I don't think so. Yeah, so you can salvage this building. Or oh, we could relocate it, actually. It is a work camp. So like I said, we'll put it down here somewhere. And they could just be told to go harvest all the trees in this area, along with everyone else. And we'll just keep this storage cart roughly around here. Clear out this entire area. It's a big build. And then we need a couple more clay mines. We don't need the clay mines, but I want to get rid of the clay that's in the way. This one's down to 268. Is there any more people we can put in there? Yeah, let's just gather as much ore as possible. Get them in there. Nice. Just hearing little chopping all over the place at the moment. And what, how's this farm doing? So we just got beans. We planted 682. We got 666. Pretty good. Pretty good. A little ominous, but pretty good nonetheless. Uh, considering our soil mixture could be a lot better. So yeah, actually, that's really where we could relocate the place afterwards. We really do need to get the sand pit, the sand mine built. So I might start laying out a road that way first. So we've got a, an exit here. I don't mind having just a curved road that leads out to this area. Firewood is low as well. That's weird. I think wood is just low because it takes so long for the wood to get over here, probably. Because it's all being stored in this cart. Alright, villagers are being cured. The doctor's doing well. Who is our doctor again? Seraka, selling snake oil, but somehow fixing people up either way. She has herbs, a little bit of poop stored in her place. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Alright, how are we doing? We're coming up to winter again. I mean, we're right on the threshold of having quite low food, but I'm not I'm not really too worried about it. I think we'll be fine. Let's check our hunters. So, our hunter, out this way, gathered 150 last year. Totally fine. Fish, 288. Actually, the, the best thing to do, instead of checking all the buildings, is we can just look. Food production. So, our food production went up and up and up, and then it's kind of come down a bit. I don't, I'm trying to think what I've stopped making. If anything, we've just added two extra buildings, so... Maybe the yield of crops has been a bit lower from before. But it is above consumption, but barely, you know, barely. I guess we could check. So protein, grain, vegetables. So the vegetables have come down, I guess. Fruit and dairy. Oh, yeah, we have to actually make a fruit. Um, you can build a building that where people harvest apples and stuff like that, like an orchard. Uh, let's see. Food production, this one. An arborist building. 25 clay. Yeah. I'm gonna stick it somewhere like out here. And then we'll just pl put plants around it and stuff. Does this affect, um, the houses next to it? Desirability is nothing. Okay, that's fine. Alright, cool. Get that built. We also need to harvest all the stone that's around here. It's just stones, please. Get rid of those. Got a lot of dead wood lying out here as well. Okay. Work camp. Let's tell them just wood all around you. Sort out there. There we go. Chopping trees. So, wood should be pretty good now. And it's just been dumped around the ground for a while while we, um, while people are a bit cold, I suppose. Still waiting on the barn to be finished. We're just, yeah, we got that bottleneck of planks. I suppose we could have another sawmill. See, a lot of them are just stocking. It is, yeah. All right, to speed that up, let's bring the cart over. It's going to take a while to get there. We'll leave the cart somewhere a bit more central. 
This is why I wish you could say, like, can't we get someone else to take the logs from here and store them in the stockyard? But you, I don't think there's a way to do that. And the, um, the wagons that move out looking for, yeah, they're actually looking for jobs to do things. Like, they need, they can't take things from the, they don't drive out to the other wagons, basically. Any more traders come by lately? Did I, I totally forgot to look back again, didn't I? Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, we've got 50 baskets in store. Still have our three cows. Almost 50 coats. We d I, this is great, though. I mean, it really will be a lot of money when we get another trader coming by. The yeah, I apologize. I'm the worst at that. I mean, unless I play on times one speed and I'm constantly checking, I just miss things. I don't know. I'm, like, often looking up at my top bar. I'm looking around down here. I'm just not paying attention to the little icons over buildings. Because, like, things like this get in the way. You know, you've got, like, oh, Hawthorne. And the symbol isn't, like, super obvious. At least not to me. How's the next harvest coming? So we're getting carrots. Good frost tolerance on those. Then we're getting cabbage again. There's almost no weeds. So we can get rid of this. Move cabbage further out. And we'll go with clover. Just to raise the fertility up a bit. Just cabbage again. I don't know if it's the best thing to do. Maybe we'll do something else. Just to vary it up. I wonder are people getting sick, like, is the place not clean, you know? They don't actually need soap or anything like that, but the these buildings, I think, do. The homesteads. No, apparently not. I'm sure you could probably provide it to them. I don't think they need soap until the next tier, though. There's still room for more people. About 24 more people have capacity for housing. Crops are ready for assignment. Nice. So this is just going to have to be um, worked on for this year. Get the weed level down, get the rockiness down. And then eventually, when this road is built, which is done now, we can get this sand mine built. So let's go resources. A sand pit. So just build it there. What does it say about it? When constructed on top of a sand deposit, the sand pit gives laborers a place to gather sand. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, well, at least it's pretty straightforward. So a work camp. No, we need a temporary shelter. Uh, where do we get that? Housing. Temporary shelter. Pop it out here. People can kind of work out here now. We can also get another gathering hut. Maybe gather some of those vegetables that are lying around. Food production. A forager shack. There's birds' nests with eggs and stuff in it. Is there any... I don't see any wildlife, really. So I'm just wondering, do we need a hunter out here? I don't think so. Maybe eventually, if we scout around a bit. We'll see what's around us. All right, so we'll get these buildings built, and then we'll be bringing in sand, and we can get the uh, farm soil levels back up a bit, and we should get higher yields uh, a little later. Oh, we have traders, sorry. We've got two, actually. There they are. So let's check them both out. We have Scorv the Butcher, leaving in 25 days, and then we have Akka of the Iron Clan, which we've seen before. So... Purchases. He is buying herbs at an increased rate. We could bring, put some in here. Why not? Just a little bit of extra money. Whenever I see that above average price, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. It's renewable. Why not? So let's say transfer items. Let's go 100 herbs. Hopefully that'll be plenty. Anything else that we want to buy, uh, sell to him? Not really. Anything else we want to buy from him? He's got shoes. He's got crude weapons. Might not be a terrible idea buying a couple of those just to give to our... I gotta be honest, I'm not really too sure what crude weapons go for, or, or like where they go, because regular weapons are used by the people in barracks. I wonder, do they use these also? It's a, a low price, so I'm thinking, yeah, we, we should take this in. Get a few of these, even just five, you know? Uh, we could do ten. Let's do ten crude weapons. Buy and let's just stock it for now, we'll move them out later. Okay, so with the other person... We then need to... So he's not here that much longer. He's only 25 days. She's here for quite a while. She's buying planks increased... Yeah, nothing really. So unfortunate. We could sell the baskets, but I'm going to wait until we get a better price. We're not desperate for gold. We're making gold, so it's okay. What the hell? Oh, our barn has been built, so now we have to move our cattle into it. Um, so yeah, so... It says select the one you want. Healthy, gray status. Okay, let's go. That's where they're going to be moved to. If they're not in there already. 
So here we go, the barn. With a barn, cattle can be raised for food, hides, and milk. So what we want to do is set the grazing area. Set it to be down here. Uh, there is actually a clay deposit there, but I think it's fine. I don't think you need to fence it off or anything. I don't think they go anywhere. The herd size. So we're setting it to 12. So just grow the herd and enable milking. I don't know why you'd ever say don't milk. I don't know why you'd ever do that. Like, why disable it? They're hungry and they haven't eaten. Status is reduced. Their healthy status. And then you can slaughter them and stuff. So yeah, let's just put two people there. They'll start working on these. And we could fence it just to make it look kind of nice. Just to know our own limits. Uh, so let's we'll go with a fence. Roughly like this, is it? Yeah. And then maybe just like a little fence gate. Cool. Alrighty. That'll be good. There they are. Does it say, so it says population 3 out of 13. And then it should say the birth rate. So zero per year at the moment. But I'm sure that'll go up when we provide them with some certain things. They need more food stored and they're hungry and not eating anything. So I think we just give them vegetables and stuff. But this is why we need um, wheat pretty badly. So we're going to get rid of weeds, weeds, weeds. So that should bring it down to about 40% or something. Maybe we can toss in wheat then. Or, um... Uh, yeah. So we could say in two years' time, get your first batch. Would that be too far out? I think so. So I'm going to mirror this. So that's like that, like that, and like that. So what's the tolerance of this? Frost tolerance is good. Heat tolerance is okay. This is no heat tolerance. So I'm just going to knock this one out of there and pop it in this way. Right, so the heat tolerance of wheat is really good. Um, so we'll just pop it more in the summertime. And then just beforehand, I don't know. We could try something like turnips again. Frost tolerance is really good. So that'll be wheat. So next year, we're getting wheat. We could even get it this year. Does it fit? It does. Oh, I reckon do it now then. Sorry for being so indecisive there. But yeah, let's just slam it in there. Maybe we'll go with cabbages. Because we're not going to be eating it though. That's the fear. We're going to be using it for the animals, so we're kind of cutting ourselves off a little bit, and then next year we're going to add food here, so... I'm risky. I'm risking things a bit, but I, I think it'll be okay. I think... Once we get the yield of carrots, it's still something, you know? Yeah. So we need a granary to be built and storage for the grains, so we'll just build it right around here. Why not? And we can update our roads and stuff a bit later. All right, cool. So we've got cows. Big deal. Um, let's see if we can just deal with that trader before he leaves. 13 days. Did we load up medicine? We did. Herbs. So we'll just sell everything we can. That's 500 gold. Love it. And he's got actual medicine there. Tallow, clay, smoked meat. We could take in some smoked meat. He's selling at low price. Seeing as we, we seem like we're going to be risking things just slightly. Maybe we'll just do that deal. So we'll buy a hundred, uh, I don't know, 150. That doesn't work for some reason, so we have to go like this. Maybe about 150. Oh, we actually can't even do that. Okay, let's just buy 70 then. 70 smoked meat, hopefully stored safely for consumption. Kind of unnecessary, but, you know, just to help a little bit before we get the uh, veg. <laughs> and then we'll just go until that veg is ripened, and then that'll be it for this episode. So a bit more of a chaotic one, I admit. I'll have a bit more of a plan going forward next time. But once the crop rotation gets going, and once this area is properly cleared, we can start building out a whole new town. And uh, things will be a little bit more optimal, let's say. I'm going to also go with another plank producing building. So we'll go with a saw pit. Again, if we don't need it anymore, we can always remove it. Or not remove it, but just like... Slope is too steep, actually. Wow. You could could flatten the land actually. Flatten the land and then maybe put it there, and then we could have up to eight people working on planks. Just for, it's just for construction purposes, and then we do have our 283 wood just stocked right here. Let's just move it even closer now. 
No plans for more houses though for a while. I think we're fine with 120 people. And we need to just get as many of them on jobs, gathering. Yeah, there's only 12 people not doing anything. Although there is actually 10 builders right now, even though we've only queued up eight. So I don't know how that's happened. They're just building the last little bit of the fence there. Gotta change the gate as well. Oh my god, this has been a bit of a mess. And it's interesting, that fence is just attaching to the bigger wall. I didn't know it does that. Does that. But the cows are out at least. They're having a great time. The fodder quality is 61%. That's what they can eat around here. So not the best, but they're pretty healthy. We're milking them, so that's going to give us extra stuff. Feed stores are full. Birth rate zero per year. Damn, yeah. Don't know why it's so low. I think when the year passes by, we might see that go up. In my other... In my stream, my other game, I have four cows, and the birth rate is two per year. People were like, oh, you didn't need to buy four. You needed two. But it looks like maybe... It, Maybe we do need more. Maybe they're all girls. We're all boys. <laughs> Alright, I think that's going to have to be it. So did we get our harvest? We did. So we're planting wheat for the first time. That'll be good for the storage of, of those guys. But then we can also now get our mill built. And then we can also create flour. And then make uh, get a bakery going and start making bread. And bread's actually a pretty good export if you can save it up for long enough. And when a trader comes by, they tend to buy it for a pretty good amount. Um, so yeah. So Oh yeah, let's just check. I keep forgetting to look out this way. So this area has been built as well. Oh my god, they have to travel so far to bring the construction material here. The logs. I wish I... If I could just simply say, dump half of this somewhere and bring that out. That'd be great. That's all I want to do. Just dump it. We could say don't store anything into it, but they don't unload it. I wish they did. Because then I could really... I mean, it'd be very micromanagey, but it's like, yeah, we can load half a cart, bring it out somewhere else, and move our stuff, move the construction material around ourselves if we wanted to. We're almost at 100% for the compost as well, so we can add that for um, fertilizer for the first farm as well. Wow, they just killed something in there. What was it? A deer that made its way into the town. Goddamn. And firewood's coming back up now as well. All right, well... All things considered, I think we're still doing just fine. Food is kind of low and people are a little unhappy about that, which is lowering birth rates and immigration rates. But other than that, things are fine. <laughs> people are sick, but we have a doctor, we're making money. We could have better defenses, I think, also. I think the next raid will be a bit more challenging if we don't put down at least one or two towers now. We can afford two. So I think I'll do that in the beginning of the next episode, choose where they can go. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you again very much for watching. Thanks for making your voices heard on the last couple of episodes. Uh, I'll keep continuing for a little while longer. I'd like to go, well, as long as people are watching, I'll, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it's easier said than done, but as long as we keep having a decent amount of people watching, I'll love to keep going and get to hopefully tier three and try to just get everything built that we can, you know, uh, to show off the game to its kind of full potential. All right, so that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord, where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing, and it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.